in the way in which we change our behavior. Well, <coughs> as you look around <coughs> the educational institutions and see what credit is given to change of behavior on the way to qualifications. That's very interesting. Well, of course, uh, as I mentioned earlier, people don't, can't just sit around and starve. They're going to organize themselves in any case. So th this is happening, and it's going, to, it's going to happen still more. In England, of course, you've got <clears throat> this thing called the LET scheme, local exchange and what, what are they called? And, and trading systems. Oh, this is the green economy. Yeah. Green economy. The Taylor speak. Yeah. Your tele economy. Now, there you well, you, uh, you earn credit you by earn, you providing work. Cards and then you can cash that in. You've got a local currency. You've got a town. In your town, you've got a local currency. Mm. And someone keeps the accounts. <coughs> see? And uh, if I come and fix your plumbing, That's right. and you fix um, Mr. Taylor's electricity, you see, and he comes along and mows your lawn, everybody does different things for each other, and you get credits. Mm. And, uh, and that's how it all works. Now, what is it? this is happening now in 200 towns in England, and it's spreading everywhere. It's spreading... Uh, France, to a certain extent, it's in America and Canada, it's happening everywhere, in America. <clears throat> and then you have an, and uh, what is interesting is the small shops are joining it. So when the small shops are getting joining in, you're getting the beginning of a localized economy. And if everybody takes part, they can boycott the supermarkets. They can just buy, you know, they can, they can slowly avoid them. <laughs> Get back here on the, uh, I, do the on the, uh, <laughs> I do the shopping and I... If I go into the supermarket and even think about buying vegetables there, I have a picture of Barbara's face and what she will say if she discovers. So I go to the Indian greengrocer's shop uh, on the grounds that it's fresher and there is personal custom. Exactly. I mean, there are all sorts of threads that are happening. Well, well that's part of the process of building up community. Yeah. You know, shopping is not just buying things. It's well, part of your social life. And, you know, it's establishing bonds. You don't do that at supermarkets, or huge clinical places. There's another thing that's going on now. It's something called community-assisted agriculture. Have you heard of that one? No. Nope. This is um, people in, in, uh, in cities. It's happening in California a lot. It's happening in lots of places um, where a whole street will adopt a farm. You see? And they'll undertake to buy its produce. And the oh. farm just delivers so many boxes of food. You don't, can't, you, don't, you, know, you can't specify whether you want carrots or tomatoes. You get whatever they produce. And, you can, and occasionally you get young people going out and working on the farm from the city during, uh, during harvest time, during planting time, etc. So it works that way. Sometimes you'll actually put in, buy shares in these farms. But you're getting this. This is all very valuable as well because otherwise these small farms will all vanish. If we're going to produce your vision, and I totally agree with it, of local economies which grow spontaneously, it will be because there are enough people who have been persuaded, not just emotionally, but can defend their positions intellectually, that they know the stuff and they know what they're doing. And I see enough of them now to cause me to believe that it is possible to become a bigger and bigger movement. Oh yes. And uh, this, this is then education. This is why, I'm yeah. sorry if you just finished, uh, what these people are doing here, what Shirley is doing, what Delise is, is doing, uh, the purpose of this particular conference. If we can get one level of it actually written into our conscious educational change, our conscious learning, that's going to take over. I talk to young people, children, down into intermediate school, secondary school, I see students coming on to the university. Um, a substantial majority of them are already persuaded. They've grown up with this. What they don't have is the intellectual underpinning which really would carry them over the hump of doubt. That's why this is so important. Um, Eventually, who would dare quote Mao any longer? Uh, but I do come right back to the only thing I can trust, and that's the people. I can't trust anything else. I can't trust the political system. Well, so it's got to be us. Well, we talked about, I agree with all that, of course, but you have to accelerate. You talk about how to accelerate this yeah. process. That's the question we were asked there a minute ago. Um, well, um, it's accelerating. 
on the, uh, in the sense that people are beginning to realize that they've been fooled. For instance, take in France, there was a, there was, um, um, a plebiscite, a referendum on Maastricht, the Sweden deal, and the, the Maastricht, and there's 40, 51 against 49. So they just won. But that's because of massive government propaganda. And the opposition had no access to the press whatsoever. Well, now it's changed completely. It's, according to a poll I've seen, it's 80% of the French people are now against it. That is why Delors, remember, Delors could probably have won the presidential election which about to fight now. He was, he was the only man on the socialist side who could have beaten Balladou. And he, he desisted. And the reason is that he realized the French people would no longer accept his enterprise of a centralized Europe. They would not, they had no hope anymore. He'd lost. 80% of people have realized it's one enormous hoax, which is what it is, of course. You see, if you consider, and you talk about the intellectual underpinning, <clears throat> well, I mean, no one's, it's, it's, it is actually building up. There's a whole new field called ecological economics, and, uh, of which the, the dean of the subject is Herman Daly, who was at the World Bank and who now is professor of ecological economics at the University of Maryland. He wrote this remarkable book called For the Common Good, you know, with a theologian called John Cobb, which provides for me the basis, you see, of a, of a new economics, of an economics, as he calls it, of man in community. You see, modern economics is an, is an absurdity. It is, uh, it, uh, uh, we see the economic processes occurring in a sort of void outside its social and ecological context. If it's not affected by the, 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 the people who live there, the society or the environment in which they live, or then, then, then if it didn't affect it, it's in a void. He has created a completely new in the economics of man in community. And I mean, you can see that the position of those who favor the global economy is based on hot air. I mean, they tell us that world trade is a means of fighting poverty and unemployment. And that with the gap, we're going to increase world trade by whatever it might be, 0.5%. Well, what no one seems to tell them is that since 1950, world trade has increased by 11 times. 11 times. What good has that done us? Uh, poverty and unemployment have reached unprecedented levels worldwide. And if we're told that any of all believe, I mean, it's a basic tenet that no one is even willing to question how many politicians in New Zealand or anywhere else have questioned the idea that economic growth creates prosperity, that economic development is a means of fighting poverty and unemployment. Well, you've had an economic development, is, economic development has increased worldwide by five times. What has that done for us since 1950? And in France, the, the economy has doubled, almost doubled, increased by 80%, 80% between 1973 and 1993. What has that done to unemployment? According to all principles, it should have massively increased unemployment, as you were, massively d decreased unemployment. Well, it's increased unemployment from, from 420,000 to 510, to, to 5 million 100,000. There's been a 12-fold increase in unemployment 